Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for Beyond Kicking and Punching with Sifu Al Dacascos, who is a living legend, and he will be interviewing another living legend in MMA as well as in、uh, Kung Fu, Black Belt Magazine, and all that. So let Sifu Al. Talk to him, and also make sure he will actually talk to you about who this man is. Because I'm, I'm so excited. That's why I'm actually a little nervous to hear his story and how he became and how what he's doing now to actually help the martial art world. So again, Sifuel, take it. Hey. Aloha from Hawaii, guys, and I'm really happy to be joining us. I'm so excited. I'm having my second, maybe even third cup of tea. No, I'm joking. I, I don't drink tea anyway. But listen up, guys. We've got a very special person joining us today. He's been in a lot of, well, life things. I mean, there's so much to learn from him. It's almost hard to pick out what he's he's done. But you know, I want to talk about. About his life, I mean, his inspiration. Because you know, people go through failures and、uh, success, and and his projects and what he's doing. So, what we want to do right now, guys, I just want you to welcome with me. You know, one of the greatest guys I know, and back, actually, I, you know, back in the days, I was just watching and what. He, well, what do you say? One of the things that I like is just that whenever he drops somebody with his spinning back kick, that was awesome because you don't see too many people doing that. So let's let's hear it from the man himself. We hear people welcome that we have here, Mr. Chong Lee. Thank you, thank you, guys.、Um, uh, you know,、uh, just real quick, it's it's Chong Lee.、Um, Um, but thank you for having me on your show.、Uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm very grateful to be on, on on your show. So okay, that that's really great. We we're talking a few minutes before we started, but you know, I'm I'm interested. I'm heck, I'm interested in a lot of things. One was that、um, how, why, and when did you begin your martial arts? I started my martial arts.、Uh, you know, after、uh, coming to America, it was about ten years old. Uh, I, I found myself, you know, being bullied a lot and、uh, getting beat up. I came over here as a refugee, three refugee camps, before I even got to America. The first one after、um, uh, the fall of Saigon,、uh, a week before the fall of Saigon, I flew.、Um, we were airlifted out. We went to the Philippines for our first refugee camp. Then, then we went to Guam. Then we are, we ended up in Monterey. And then after about six months out there, we ended up.、Um, Uh, we had a sponsor, and we lived with the family. And then,、um, uh, shortly after that, my grandfather、um, moved us to San Jose and started, you know,、uh, our life in San Jose. And、um, you know, as growing up, you know, because、um, the the I think the public wasn't informed about what was really going on, so everyone was really upset about like the war, the casualties, and you know, a, a lot of fathers, a lot of Uncles were lost in the war, and and、um, so I think there was a lot of、um, um, hate and racism going on、um, when when I came over. And as I grew up, you know, I just noticed、uh, I, I, I was picked on and bullied because I was Vietnamese, and、um, you know, even by the Mexican kids. And、um, you know, I my mom just got tired of. Me coming home, you know, with、uh, a black eye or, or or a bloody nose, and so she took me to martial arts, and you know,、um, I, I guess from there the rest is history. From martial arts to wrestling to back, you know, back to martial arts, and then、uh, you know, then then you know, competing at the highest level. You were about what ten years old when you started in martial arts, or? Yeah, I was at I was ten years old, but I was off and on for about ten months because. You know,、um, my mom, you know, she she was a single parent.、Uh, my dad was still in、uh, still in Vietnam, and and、um, so basically, she she raised me. But at the same time, she had to hold like two jobs, sometimes a third job, just to make ends. So I didn't get to practice enough. So, you know, whenever the test came came up, I would never 
be able to take part in the test. And finally, you know, um, everyone who started at the same time I, I was by the time, you know, 10 months later, they're like green belt and I was still a white belt because I was so inconsistent. But then um, after that, I found wrestling and I wrestled from seventh grade all the way till my sophomore year in college. And then, then I went back to martial arts. And then, uh, you know, th that that's when I really found my calling uh, you know, coming back to martial arts, competing in point fighting, in continuous sparring, in, uh, you know, full contact. And I found Sanda, which is, you know, the Chinese, uh, uh, you know, art of punching, kicking, sweeping, throwing, you know. So, you know, um, that's that's where I kind of made my name because I started throwing scissor kicks and stuff. That's pretty hard to find that, the shot ball. Where, where do you, um, where? Do you find it in Los uh, in uh, San Jose? Uh, can can you repeat the question, please? You no, know, the art, uh, the last art that you studied, you know, that you became, that you got into. Um, well, was, um, it in, was it in uh, San Jose that you found the school? No, well, see, by that time I was um, already a state champion in junior college. I wrestled. I was a multiple national champion throughout high school as a junior and then as a senior. And then, um, so I, I had a really strong wrestling pedigree. And then, uh, and then I, when I went back to, um, you know, um, the martial arts, I had the basics, the punching, the kicking. And then, uh, you know, um, I just, I, I, I got a flyer for a tournament in uh, Alabama uh, hosted by Sean Liu, who's like a lower, like, you know, like a, he, he's, you know, he, like a, uh, he, he brought the like the Sancho over here. He brought the the Wu Jing team over here, and then uh, you know we got to train with them. And and then uh, you know after I won the U.S. Open, he you know right away recruited me and said that the U.S. National is coming up and I should compete in compete in it. So I went to the Nationals and I won the Nationals there too. And then and then from that point, I I went to the U.S. Team Trials and then um, you know uh, dominated everyone and went to the world championships and brought home a bronze medal um, and uh, you know just uh, continued in the martial arts uh, hardcore after that wow that's awesome so this this uh, you know it's like you gotta you got you gotta wrap shit on uh, <laughs> sheet on your on your fighting and everything that's, that's longer than my arm and it's uh, it's amazing what, what, what you've been what you've been doing I mean that's really inspirational because I know there are a lot of kids look up for athletes that has accomplished something because you they follow but a lot of them you know they say the success that you've had but I don't think that maybe they understand the hard work and the failure and the dedication and the self-discipline that you've 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 gone through now you know, so I know that something has got to inspire inspire you to to get into achieving what you you do. What what was the what, let me let me say then what 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 inspired you and what was your your pivoting point? Um, I, you know, I, I gotta say it's just my my mom um, telling me you know um, uh, that. I need to stand up for myself. Mm. You know, my family being very close to God, uh, you know, Jesus Christ, and, um, you know, putting things in his hands and, you know, kind of, you know, look at it as like, it's not your plan. Uh, it's, it's you know, God's plan. So, you know, I just, um, I was very religious and, you know, uh, I just remember one of my prayers is always like, uh, dear God, protect me from all injuries, protect my opponent from any serious injuries and um, um, and let me compete at my best. So I, I just, you know, I, I just remember every time I, whether it's uh, warming up or getting ready for a bout or a match or whatever it is, I remember that prayer and win, lose or draw afterwards, you know, all glory goes to God. And then um, I think just being, being that way and then, um, uh, you know, uh, giving God all the glory was, uh, a big part of my success. Amen. Amen. When you, you know, were you uh, uh, a Christian before you came uh, here or, or were you yeah. already? Yes, my grandfather was really 
it was uh, more like Catholic, but he, he, he taught us to pray to God, pray to Jesus and, uh, you know, no one else. And, and, you know, I, I stuck to that, and, you know, and, you know, we went to church for a long time. And then, um, you know, when, you know, life takes over and things get busy, you just got to make a point of it. You know, it's not about going to church. It's about where your prayers uh, start and where it ends. Uh -huh. So what's your greatest challenge now? Um, raising my son to become, uh, well, my sons to becoming, you know, the, the men that potentially they could be. Uh -huh. Is your father here now? Uh, your family, the whole family? Uh, no, my father passed away uh, 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 this Thanksgiving. Um, so um, it's just, I was more close with my mom. I didn't speak to my father. I wish I would have. Um, and again, you know, I, you got to learn the hard way sometimes, even though, you know, parents or whoever it is, you know, they, they did wrong. I think the biggest thing is if, if he would have just apologized, we would have established a relationship um, faster. So, you know, I, I learned from my father, you know, um, it's best to communicate. So, you know, between me and my boys, my sons, we have a really good, strong relationship because I, I, I try to communicate with my sons, you know. I communicate not only just with my sons, but, you know, with my wife and the family members and, the, you know, the people that that is in my life. It's all about communication. Uh, uh, so um, how old is your son now? My oldest is 20. Uh, my uh, middle son is uh, 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 16. And then uh, um, I, I have a 10, I have a 10 year old that uh, lives with his, his uh, biological mother. Uh, so you have, you have three children then? Yes. Awesome, all boys, no girls. All boys, yeah. Uh, so you gotta, building up a, a good fighting team sooner or later. Anyway, yeah, um, yeah this, oh, there you go. That's, is that, that's my, that's Anthony Lee, that's my middle son. He's the martial artist out of all of them. Uh -huh. This was about two years ago when he was 14, and I think uh, you know now now he's he's a 16 year old kid that he punches like a man and uh, kicks like like uh, you know he, he's a beast. Uh huh. Um, there you go. There you go. You're putting in the signature kick. You know? <laughs> yeah. Great. Fantastic. So, let's get on. You know, my, I don't know, you, you you might not be able to talk too much about it, but um, you got projects and it's now, I see that you're getting into the entertainment field. What inspired you to get into the, the movie industry? Well, um, it, it, it kind of found like, it found me. Um, I was into uh, competing and fighting and, I remember when I was fighting for Scott Coker in Strike Force. Um, there was this big, uh, uh, this big casting, and, and I went out there to L L.A. and I, I was just more out there training with some new sparring partners. And then um, uh, some of the guys said, "Hey, there's an audition going on for the Mortal Kombat TV show." I'm all cool, have fun, you know. I'll be at. The <laughs> They're like, "No, uh, it, it, it's happening during time." You know, during when we're training, so we're all gonna go. So no one's gonna be there to train. So I ended up going with them, and uh, I, I remember that's where I met JJ Perry. And I believe JJ's worked with your son. Uh, he's out of the eighty-seven eleven team, and then um, and then um, I, I went in there, and you know, we uh, ended up doing a, a fight choreograph with like one of my old instructors, um, um, Tony, and then. Uh, I, I, I implement the scissor kick, I implement the souffle, and then right away, Larry Kaznoff, who was the uh, producer, uh, you know, right away pulled me aside and said, hey, uh, do you know how to read? You know, I, I, I was being a, I, I didn't understand what he meant. Like, do I know how to read? Like, read a script? I was like, sure, as long as it's English, you know? <laughs> so, so he says, uh, can you uh, uh, meet back um i forget what day but i remember i had a three-day grace period and i said i gotta get back home and then uh, i gotta go and uh you know um uh you know go back and train with my other guys over back at home 
So he says, it's really important that you make this one. So I decided, I, I you know, I, I had to make it. When I did come back, um, I was expecting a huge casting call line, and, you know, like, you know, just wait in the line. When I got there, I remember it's just Larry Kasnoff, the showrunner, the guy who was running the camera, and then the person who was reading, and then also another executive. And, you know, you know, I think I just really, that was the worst audition I ever had because, you know, I went in there, I had one acting session the day before because someone told me, hey, um, you should at least, you know, work with a, like work with my acting coach because the guy was an actor. And then, um, so I, I did it. I just didn't understand much about acting at the time. I was just like, hey, you know, it's, I get to do martial arts. Great. Let's, let's do it. You know, so um, obviously I didn't get the part. Uh, so they, they called me back for uh, being his stunt double. And I was like, oh, sorry. I, I just signed for a new fight. So I'm in fight camp now. So I, I didn't do the stunt work. I didn't, I just, it didn't, it, was, it wasn't like number one on priority. And then, you know, um, uh, after that, a couple of my friends um, asked me to be in their like short film. And then uh, I ended up going to acting class with them and, you know, being part of their short film and they paid for it. So, you know, then, then I enjoyed it. And, you know, I, it still, it gave me a chance to still do martial arts. So, you know, I figure I couldn't fight forever. So I, I somehow, some way I would, you know, you know, find a career after fighting. And uh, it, the, it, the, the entertainment kind of found me after my fight against uh, Tony Freakman, um, uh from, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, in, in Strike Force, it was my third MMA fight, you know, it was aired on Showtime. I, I think after that, uh, you know, a couple um, agents and uh, uh, managers called me and, um, you know, I went out there and right away they got me an audition for fighting this movie with Channing Tatum. And then um, I went out there and did the audition. I got the part and then, you know, the rest is history. Wow. Wow. Awesome. So do you find it? Um, I know it's a different part of life, you know, because once you switch over from going into full martial arts and in other words competition and getting into the entertainment industry um some people panic but i guess you didn't because you were already performing in front of a lot of people and i guess when you did your 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 calling um were you nervous actually i wasn't nervous because you know between all the wrestling matches i had all the amateur bouts I had, then all the professional bouts I had, it, it was just like, this is like easy stuff, you know? Um, I, you know, I think some of the challenges is like some of the lines, you know, the certain way you pronounce it, you, you get some tongue twisters and, wow. you know, that, that was it for me. Of course, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't take it as serious as I did as um, um, martial arts and fighting. Uh, so, you know, I, I realized that you have to put in the same amount of time to, you know, be proficient. And then I learned that over the years of after like a lot of auditions, like, like the first three auditions I got, it was like one after another, like I got fighting. Then I got, um, um, uh, uh, this movie with Wu, uh, Wu Ping, um, who's, uh, a renowned, uh, director and action director in China. Or in Hong Kong, and then then I got Pandorum, and Pandorum was the first audition where, you know, I had an audition only doing dialogue instead of punching and kicking and doing my flips or whatever, and so um, I got that. And the character was ma uh, meant for a Japanese, but they couldn't find anyone as physical uh, for the part. And when I when I came in, I auditioned, and uh, be before I even left the parking lot, my agent called me and says, "Hey." You got the part. Congratulations! I was like, "Oh, that's awesome!" You know, and I'm all, I didn't have to do any kicks or punches. That's awesome. So, you know, then then after that, you know, the, the bigger auditions came in, and you know, I, I, you know, I took it, you know, for granted, and I didn't study as where I would have studied, like you know, like for an exam or something. And then, uh, you know, I just uh, whatever whatever it was, I believe it's God's plan, and you know, live and learn, and you know, and. Uh, you know, now I, I, I'm I'm kind of like working on you know different projects and more of a, you know um, kind of like with my mother-in-law and my my wife because 
uh, you know, it's, it's crazy. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, you know, like, that's crazy. Like, they don't believe it. But my mother-in-law, my, my wife, they're, they're, they're an exorcist. You know, they, they perform exorcisms uh, and they fight demons. So awesome. you know, um, I've actually joined the squad and, you know, I, I put together um, Instagram for them. I started a YouTube for them. And man, we, we get so much requests for doing exorcism. And, and the sad thing is a lot of these teenagers and stuff, they're, they, they've sold their soul to the devil. And um, there's really, you, once you sell your soul to the devil, you, I don't know, it's, you, you can't be saved. You know, you, you signed it away and, you know, so, um, you know, I started the spiritual battles worldwide and, you know, um, I'm actually uh, excited uh, this, this coming, uh, this coming week, uh, I get to go uh, with my mother-in-law and she's going to um, help out Zach Bagans of uh, uh, Ghost Adventures, you know, on a, a case in Elk Grove where I moved to and I moved back, you know, from, so it's, uh, it's kind of like a, uh, you know, a different direction, but um, I think, uh, like I said, is I, I don't have my own plans anymore. I just, you know, it's God's plan, and then, you know, whatever He needs me to do, then I'll do. Well, how do how, you know? That's very interesting. On that, how do people join in and get involved with you on this? Um, you know, I mean, uh, they, they can definitely uh, reach out to Spiritual Battles Worldwide on Instagram. She. She answers a lot of uh, questions about, you know, like clearing a house or if someone feels that there's negative energy in the house or if someone's, you know, uh, you know, sees shadow figures or, you know, children in the house that is not really there. It's actually a demon. Um, so, is yeah. Is there a chat group, a chat group to join? Uh, it's, not, it's not a chat group, but it's, a, it's an Instagram panel called Spiritual Battles Worldwide spiritual yeah. battles worldwide because as you know one of us we're in a spiritual battle every single day we wake up our goal is to do the right thing but of course on the left side always pushing negative and you know it's a, the, the yin and yang of life right the good versus bad you know so um, wow. yeah as you um, see the world we live in now look at it yeah it's kind of scary it's kind of scary now, the other one I have is about Asian actors. Where do you see Asian actors now fitting in? I know there's a lot more coming in. Yeah, I, I see a lot of potential for Asian actors, you know? They're, 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 they did a Mortal Kombat, I believe. Uh, uh, the the uh, Shang-Chi Shang is coming out. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Steak Eyes. I mean, I, I believe, you know, they're, uh, you know, um, Hollywood pushing Asian more for, uh, you know, for the lead, you know, because I believe there's a lot of good um, uh, directors uh, that are Asian, you know, mm -hmm. they, you know, they, they get their projects pushed ahead because, um, you know, the studios know they, they can deliver. It's all well, about I making. See, I see a lot of Asians now coming up to the forefront, you know, as far as directing and acting and things that way is really, really great. You know, um, back in the 70s or the early 80s, when my son Mark was getting into it, he was too too Asian to be white and too white to be Asian. You know, so that gave him a real bad problem. It was really hard for him to do that. But you know, now we can have pure Asians up there, and I'm really happy that we have a lot of Asians come up there because it's about time. I mean, I look at going back. You know, America was built especially when you talk about the, the railroads, you know, they were built with, uh, with, with Chinese labors. And you know, there's a significant part of it's real, it's a, that's part of our culture. So I'm really, really happy to see this coming. And you know, with you getting into the entertainment field, you know, I've got a lot of hopes for you because I know that um, my talk about your project, I want to sneak into it, but I know that you got to keep it under the wrap. I know that, yeah. But, um, um, that's one of your projects, and I, I know I know that it's not going to be the only one because once you start on the road, it's like getting on a railroad, you know, on your track, and you're not going to stop. So I can see a real great future for you. Now, what would be um, the what kind of words of inspiration or wisdom would you leave our group? Um, tomorrow's not promised. Make the best of today. And uh, you know, put God first, 
you know, and uh, everything will be fine. You know, that's right. When you put God at the tip, everything falls into place. You know, a lot of times, you know, I've had my own issues with with with, with uh, religion, but you know, I'm not. I'm a Christian. Yeah, you know? and yeah. I'm really happy to be talking to a fellow Christian because sometimes they make it kind of awkward when I talk to someone because I don't know what their uh, religious values or, or you know where they're heading to. So God bless you on that. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. Perhaps maybe in the future when your project is done, we can come back and we can go ahead and talk more about it. So. I, I, I appreciate you for joining us and I thank you very much. Is there any last things that you would like to leave us with? Um, you know, thank you for having me on the show and uh, for everyone tuning in. Thank you for watching and, you know, God bless everyone and uh, stay safe. Be kind to those who are kind to you and uh, always be ready because the world we, the world we live in, it, I, I believe it's not getting any better. But um, you are your first responder, so be a good one. Thank you very much. Chang, thank you for having us. Okay, Sonny, this is yours. All right, well, thank you, Sifu. And thank you, Sir Kung Lee, for uh, being part of uh, Sifu Aldis Costco's uh, Beyond Kicking and uh, Punching uh, podcast. I mean, it was really exciting to hear what you had to say. And it was quite inspiring because I've watched you do your stuff from fighting to doing your spinning back fist to your spinning. Uh, oh, my favorite is actually your spinning wheel kick or spinning kick from Taekwondo because I started in Taekwondo myself and I just love how you do, how you did it. And you just proved to people that, you know, kicking someone in the head actually works you know because yeah. there's always been that controversy saying yeah. you can't kick someone in the head and you proved it over and over again so again thank you for inspiring people to keep doing you know better and and doing more again thank you everybody for joining us on this podcast remember that Sifu Al Costcos has his website, thecostcosmartialarts.com, uh, for more information on his products. He's got his DVDs that you can start with, his old products, so that this way you can get started with it. And then pretty soon, in the next uh, couple of weeks, we're going to hopefully have his DTS finally revealed. So again, make sure you uh, get onto the site, sign up for the free uh, DTS video sampler and anything else. If you guys have any questions, by all means, either email Sifuel or myself personally. Greatly appreciate it. Again, thank you everyone for joining us. Bye-bye again. Thank you.